This morning's Tech Talks as part of the big event, streaming from Timmins, Ontario. Our next presenter is Stephen Shonsby of Rhino Inc. He's going to talk about applications for monorail haulage. Um, I suspect it's significantly more advanced than the old bucket lines that used to dominate our landscape in Timmins, crossing where Highway 101 is now. Um, but again, I'll let him do the presenting, not me. So, Stephen, come on up. Check, check. Okay, good morning, everyone. So, my presentation today is Applications for Monorail Haulage, brought to you by Rhino. So my agenda is to have a brief comp company introduction, uh, some honorable mentions for rail use and how we got to this point, the benefits of the technology, the system design, power source, site requirements, and how we eliminate derailments. Uh, we're going to compare some haulage technologies to the Rhino. Uh, we're going to speak about the incline considerations that have to be taken into account, the underground mining advantage, the haulage cost savings that are possible using monorail. Uh, we have one case study uh, using at the extreme small end of hauling 4,000 tons per day as a haulage connector and a second case study hauling 60,000 tons a day within pit haulage. We also are going to discuss some of the innovation opportunities available uh, from our government uh, partners and some closing remarks. So Rhino was started in 2020 by Aaron Lambert uh, after a long stint in mining contracting. And we've seen the opportunity for uh, haulage-based solutions uh, based upon conventional track drifts and race climbing technology. Having something modular that you could put together and transfer ore. My background and how I got involved with this uh, came from my father. My dad at age 24 uh, started out near Timmins, a little town called Boston Creek, and at 24 years old built this system to unload 3,000 tons of copper ore onto, our, onto a rail car. Did it successfully all by himself. Proof that innovation is alive and well in Northern Ontario. Probably wouldn't do it today, but it was good back then. Some honorable mentions for rail use. Uh, we're applying existing technologies to mining. It's as simple as that. Uh, there's an incline within the shadow of downtown Pittsburgh that was built in 1870. 190, me 190 meters long and a 35 degree incline. It has an average 40 year component life. That is the sustainability of monorail and rail. It lasts for considerably longer than anything else that's on tires. I did a stint, I spent 15 years at Valet. Uh, my start out job was as a rail car dumper. And we were using electric Lokis to deliver ore that were from 1929. And we retired them in 2001. The other honorable mention is Disney's monorail. Um, it's been hauling precious cargo, our children, since 1982. It's 23 kilometers long, has variable inclines, and it's driven by 62, it's a 62 meter long train, driven by only eight 84 kilowatt motors. You can see that 84 kilowatt uh, comparison is, is similar to what we're looking at. So the technology benefits for monorail is it's carbon neutral. Everyone is talking about having a carbon neutral, zero emission technology. There's efficiency. Rail is by far the most efficient means of transport. You don't have friction. There's autonomous operations. If you look at the SkyTrain in Vancouver, it operates without drivers for considerable periods of time might be conductors for people coming back from 
you know, uh, Vancouver Canucks game, but there's, there's, it doesn't need to have a driver. There's also significantly reduced environmental risk and reduced long-term liability. And that is in part by the compact nature and the compact footprint of a monorail. We only need a six foot width. The power, now we're getting into the system design, the power requirements for the Rhino. We're envisioning a 750 volt DC bus bar. This is lock, stock and barrel, similar to what you would see on a municipal transit system in any metropolitan city. The auxiliary supply would be a battery, which there are several out there, and it'll have electrical regeneration capabilities when driving down inclines. The drive power is 900 kilowatts to carry a 120 ton payload operating at 10 kilometers an hour on an 18 degree incline. The minimum drive requirement would be just two 75 kilowatt motors powering on a, on a level non-inclined surface. We can configure this in several different applications in several different manners. We've looked at 240 ton trains down to 60 ton trains. The haulage distance, we're looking and targeting a one kilometer distance to an un unlimited distance depending on the economics. The topography, we feel we can handle up to a 20% grade incline. That's the engineered design at this point. The civil infrastructure would be concrete pads when on a soil surface and bedrock anchoring when you're in an in-pit in pit scenario. The turning radius is very unique. It's a 7.6 meter or 25 foot turning radius. The road width is a nominal six feet. Our ground, that, this means that we can go through a seven foot diameter culvert. The ground pressure, we've calculated this, recalculated this, talked to civil engineers, it's less than one PSI ground pressure. My foot is like eight PSI. A, a, a car truck is 30 PSI. So very low ground pressure. The rail segments are six to 12 meter long rail sections, similar to what you would see when you buy commercial steel supplies from any industrial um, supply center. The big thing and the big reason why a lot of companies strayed away from rail in 70s and 80s was derailments. And in doing research for this presentation, you know, I, I look to YouTube like a lot of other people do. And, you know, one of the big commentaries were, you know, that was the, 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 the biggest thing that we always had to learn was how to get the, the train back on track. The, the training systems were about derailments. The monorail will completely eliminate derailments by, by virtue of its design. If you look at the tires, you have tires vertically and horizontally, thus eliminating your potential risk. It will be able to handle steep inclines and high speed without any modifications. The picture that I have of the rail cars is actually nearby from Kid Creek. Um, it's been circulating LinkedIn recently, and you can see the guy with the bar getting ready to uh, monitor the train cars so that they didn't rail on the, derail on the switch. Now, in comparison to other rail technologies, there's a lot of things to consider. It has to be your project application. Uh, a 500 ton a day narrow vein gold mine probably would not be the best scenario for a monorail. The tonnage just isn't there. So your production rates are a big consideration. Your duration actually is a benefit to a monorail of our, of our style because it's modular. We can disconnect and reconnect and we feel we can assemble a very long distance in a very short period of time because we're gonna have a modular system for installing the rail. And the rails themselves will only weigh 1,500 pounds or less than 1,000 kilos uh, on setup, obviously dependent on your length. 
The footprint and ground pressures are extremely low. This then obviously uh, aids in the civil design of the road surface. The other operational impact that's positive is monorails don't generate dust, or not nearly the amount of dust as a 200 ton haul truck. The, the surface area just is not there. The weather effects, unlike a conveyor, which is sometimes weather dependent, um, you have to keep them going. We can park the, 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 the drive devices in a thaw shed if needed be, or um, just keep things running. It does not have the weather effects of um, tire-driven equipment. I, I grew up along the side of the ONR railway, minus 40, the train still went. Snowstorm, the train still went. The monorail will do the same thing. The big other additional benefit is this piece of equipment can run throughout shift change. It's completely autonomous. It will operate and, and be thus more efficient than uh, individual pieces of haulage equipment. Incline considerations. We can operate theoretically at a 30% incline. You do not lose uh, traction on a 30% incline with a monorail. And in fact, that slide that I presented earlier on the 35 degree uh, incline, uh, the steepest road surface in North America is right adjacent to that in Pittsburgh. That's a 30 degree incline that two wheel drive Toyota Corollas drive up. So it is possible. By having a 30 degree incline or an 18% incline, we can access the ground much faster at depth. It will also facilitate shallow angle ore deposits that may not have been mined and render uh, certain technologies uh, more feasible to shallow angle mining. By having a 30% incline distance, I'm cutting my distance for development from 3,200 meters to 2,000 meters, a 38% drop in development rate. That's significant. There's existing steep ramps in mines. Historically, inclined shafts and steep ramps have been used. Uh, they fell out of favor because um, the uh, powers that be at the time, uh, safety is one of them. Um, pinch points and, and productivity by having uh, no derailments uh, favored the use of uh, track or, or tire driven equipment. Now the underground mining advantage that we also see is a step change to, develop, to underground development. We also feel conventional development right now is, is sitting, when, when we're talking about ramp development, it's, it's a, the standard go-to is the five by five meter ramp or, or, or uh, drift development. With the Rhino, because we only need that six foot width, we feel very comfortable that we can go with a nine square meter, three by three meter development. That reduces your excavated tons by 64%. And in 2012, when Valet and uh, a rail client uh, pursued the 114 ore body, they noticed an increase in development rates by 240%. They were developing in Sudbury 400 foot per week development rates. Very significant. And by doing that, they had an earlier ore production, reduced mine ventilation, Electrical consumption was very low, and they had less ground support requirements. Therefore, they could attack the face faster. Now, in terms of costs, uh, we did a comparison uh, using a 42-ton haul truck, and for this scenario, it was $4.30 per ton. That probably would be a little bit higher now based on fuel costs, uh, Cresting the $2 a liter, I think it was $2.31 for gasoline uh, this morning. Um, maintenance costs have gone up. Labor costs likely have gone up as well. The Rhino, because it is electric, the fuel cost is nominal. The maintenance cost, because it's in place, 
is nominal, and the labor cost is significantly lower because it's autonomous. The other major factor with the, the Rhino is we can still handle a minus 700 millimeter rock particle. You cannot do that with a conveyor. So truly a unique design for an autonomous haulage system. So our first case study was a 4,000 ton a day remote but grid powered copper gold mine in Canada. Uh, we were scoping out the delivery of minus 700 millimeter rock that would be uncrushed but through a grizzly, likely with rock breakers, um, hauling one kilometer to the crushing plant. It was a fully autonomous operation and would eliminate surface dust and we were going to use seven foot diameter tunnels for, to eliminate road intersections. It was not reliant on any diesel deliveries and at this site they were paying significant amounts for diesel operating 777 haul trucks that they had in their fleet when they were an open pit producer. The savings um, on a three year production cost was substantial, $8.9 million and in operating at a longer period of time, just five years, it was 17.5. You can really, really see the benefits when you have a longer length operation with the Rhino, significantly better than anything on a truck. We selected a, sort of a half Rhino, which would be a 60 ton Rhino, to replace just two 777 trucks. And this delivered us a 75% decrease in OPEX. Our case study number two was a 60,000 ton per day in pit haulage in South America. This is a very unique ore body in the fact that they were using 777 haul trucks for 60,000 tons a day. You wouldn't normally see something like that, but they had a very broad landscaped operation. So we were looking at three kilometer in pit haulage to the stockpile locations, an automated operation Eliminating the road construction and reducing the operations, operational emissions were significant drivers in this project. We selected 10 120 ton Rhino trains on a loop circuit and on a three year production cost, this cost savings was $64 million and on a five year, it doubled to $128 million. Innovation opportunities. The monorail can be implemented into, very, into many new and existing mine operations. Because of its compact footprint, it lends itself to a lot of um, historic operations that may be too tight for a five by five meter equipment. It's very useful sur for surface haulage. And of course, we can look at the um, steeper ramp development if need be. We have innovation support from a variety of government partners. Uh, CMIC, Rethink Mining, is a proud sponsor and, and uh, a friend of ours, along with uh, Charles at SEMI um, and Peru Min down in Peru. Thank you and any questions? That's a good question. Um, historically, trains have been used in areas where there is a requirement for low ground pressure. A very classic example would be the rail line from Winnipeg up to Churchill, Manitoba. It's on permafrost. There is no other, you cannot really put a road to haul significant volumes of material. Yeah, you could put a logging road on it, but that is the significant benefit. The other benefit would be if I'm trying to um, firm up uh, a tailings area and I had concerns about um, putting very heavy duty equipment on top of, of, of a tailings berm, uh, at one PSI, there is no concern with the Rhino.
we have a prototype designed. We have engineering design completed. We have costing completed. And we are in discussions with a variety of contract firms and mining firms internationally. Absolutely. With, with that said, it's uh, been a pleasure being in Timmins, and uh, have a great day, everyone.